The election is less about left versus right on social, economic or security issues. Instead, right means you're with Netanyahu and left means you're against him. This election is a referendum on Netanyahu himself. After 10 years as Prime Minister, he's become the reference point for all the other candidates. For many Israelis, it's become hard for them to even imagine anyone else as Prime Minister. The parties have broken down into three basic groups. The right, led by the Likud and Naftali Bennett and Ayelet Shaked's new right. Because Netanyahu was worried about the center-left parties coming together, he pressured a number of smaller right-wing parties, including one made up of Kahanists, based on a racist party banned for incitement in the 80s, to come together in order to stop so-called wasted votes. The center-left is led by Benny Gantz and Yari Lapid and their blue and white party, and also includes the Labour Party, Meretz, and Orly Levis Gesher. And lastly, the sectarian parties, including the two lists made up of parties representing Palestinian citizens of Israel, as well as both Ashkenazi and Mizrahi ultra-Orthodox parties. So it doesn't matter how you break down or read the political map. The biggest question each of these factions will contend with is whether they're with Netanyahu or against him. The election is also a referendum on Israel's democracy. We've seen the Prime Minister attack the President, the Justice Minister attack judges and the courts, the Police Minister attack the Police Commissioner, and the Culture Minister attack artists. Is this what democracy is supposed to be? Which leads us to our next big issue, the way the rule of law is playing a big role in the campaign. And I don't mean that in an academic way. What I mean is that the discussion about Netanyahu and the corruption investigation against him are dominating the headlines. Bibi's political opponents are being careful here. They don't want to say Bibi is corrupt. Netanyahu is a master of political spin. He's already shown that he can turn investigation against him into a public perception of a witch hunt. In a departure from Israel's ethical norms, it doesn't look like he'll resign in the face of these legal challenges. Once the Attorney General decides whether or not to indict Netanyahu and when he announces this decision, will dominate the headlines far more than any policy issue. Third, Social and economic issues have come back to the fore of the campaign. Social justice issues have come up in statement across the board. Chief among the concerns is the cost of living and the housing crisis. Former Israel Beitenu MK Orly Levi Abikasis has started her own party and has presented a plan designed to rehabilitate public housing. And Moshe Kahlon's party is promoting its own achievement in this space. You can also take a look at the results of Labour's primary, where not a single significant military figure made it to the top spots. Instead, it was dominated by people who placed social justice issues at the top of their priority list. Right across the political spectrum, the issues of housing, health, education, and the cost of living are central issues. Lastly, let's talk about what no one is talking about, the occupation. Everyone is talking about security. The new blue and white faction has three former IDF chiefs of staff on their list, and Netanyahu is painting himself as the only one who can guarantee security. But no one is really talking about what many consider as the biggest issue facing Israeli society, the 51-plus year occupation of the Palestinian territories. A noteworthy exception occurred during Benny Gantz's first speech, in which he mentioned the necessity of pursuing peace, saying that under his leadership, the government will strive for peace and will not miss an opportunity to bring about regional change. Of course, parties on the right still openly talk about annexing the West Bank. And if they end up in government again, you can be sure that's what's going to dominate the agenda. So will Israelis stick with Bibi, or will the anyone but Bibi camp be able to draw enough people across? We still have a few weeks to go until election day, and anything can happen in Israeli politics. So stay tuned as we keep you updated running to April 9th.